Welcome back to the bench. Today, for repair and maintenance, we have a RAM expansion 512K for the Amiga 500. But we don't just have one, there's a second one, there's a third one, there's a fourth one. And here's the fifth one. So we have five RAM boards to actually take a look at today. Most of them are in reasonable condition. Um, this one obviously won't suffer the leaking battery problem because it has a coin cell battery already on there. And it looks like it came with that fitted. Um, I had tested these quickly and uh, two of them work and three of them don't. Um, but even on the ones that do work, the clocks don't work. So that's probably due to the batteries being flat. Um, this one didn't work, but afterwards when checking, I noticed the point is, my pointer here, is here. Focus. There is a pad that's been lifted off. And on this side, you can see there used to be some wires connected. And there's obviously there was a switch there that had been hot glued so that somebody could just reach in and just flick it on and off. So I think if I follow this trace down to here and solder a wire onto there and back up to this pin here, then this one will probably work. Uh, not sure if there's gonna be any charge left in that battery. I don't know how long it is since these things have been plugged in. But we can have a quick test of the battery. No, that's reading millivolts, so that's absolutely dead. Yeah. Uh, this one's nice and furry, so it's furry nice. So that's definitely got to go. This one has some signs of leakage, but not a huge amount. Again, millivolts. This one, a little bit of leakage on it. Not a huge amount either. No. And this one, Seems to have no signs of leakage on the actual battery, but there is a bit of green around some of these components. So I don't think this battery is leaked. What it is, is I got all these cards from the same seller. So what I suspect has happened is that maybe these have all been piled in a box and that um, one of these others has dripped down some fluid onto the board and caused the, uh, the damage to the board. So, first things first, I wanna get all these batteries off, except for this one. But maybe we'll take this one off as well because, you know, it's pretty much dead. So, I've got the soldering iron warming up and with these barrel connectors ones, we can just hopefully just loosen the solder. the cleaning part so here I've just got a small amount of uh, white wine vinegar um, so that will neutralize the alkaline of the uh, from the leaked batteries so I'm just going to give it a good scrub
So the boards have dried off a bit now. I've rinsed them down with IPA. This one I just quickly just soldered on a little bodge wire just to fix that broken trace. This one is where the battery was corroded. So let's see how far that corrosion goes. So here to here, that's fine. We have continuity, that's fine. But on this trace, ah, we do. So even though this looks like the pad lifted, it actually hasn't. The pad is actually still there. Once we got the crap off, we can see that it's still there. This one's still full of solder. Oh, bad solder, but it's oh, just gunk. So I'll just push out. I mean, that, even that's still connected. I mean, it's connected to the trace which runs through this resistor, which is the important thing. Yeah. So, the traces around there don't seem to be broken, so this one should be a runner. This one cleaned up reasonably well. Got a lot of the green off. It's still a bit damp from the IPA. So, yeah, we'll let these dry off fully before we start uh, plugging them into the... Uh, Amiga. This is the same as the other type again. Yeah, it looks like those that pad's corroded, but or fully corroded, but I think it's still connected. Yes, it is. So I might hit that with a bit of glass paper just to take the top surface of that green off. And here again. Yeah, this is not working, but that one is. We'll get a rough reading through the resistor. Yeah. So again, nothing's actually broken. So the connection just goes straight through to the RAM chip, uh, to the clock chip. So that's a good one. And this one, it looks like, well, it did get under the solder mask, but it uh, doesn't look like it's actually damaged any traces. So as long as the uh, chemicals do their job and get rid of that, then it shouldn't progress any further. So I'll uh, give these some more time to dry off and then we'll uh, plug them into the Amiga and we'll see which ones work and which ones we need to do more work on. Catch you in a minute. Okay, so I've got my uh, Amiga 500 set up here and I've just plugged in the first this cheaper looking board and I'm currently booting into workbench at the moment to see if we get any life out of this board. Okay so it's recognized the clock it says it's the 2nd of January 1980 and we're into workbench and yes so that board is now fully functional so on to the next one Try this board next. And we're booting, so that's a good sign. Okay, this one says battery backup clock not found. So that's not working but the RAM expansion is actually working. So it's just the battery backup clock that doesn't appear to be working on this one. So yeah, we can take a look at that. I mean, a lot of the corrosion was around the clock area. So it could be that the crystal has been damaged or something else has been damaged on there. Maybe we can take the chip out. Maybe the clock chip's bad. Let's try this one. This one I have little faith in this one working because it was so badly corroded compared to the others. But we'll give it a go. You never know, she might surprise us. It was tricky to get these boards in sometimes. Get the pins lined up. There we go. And the 
is booting, which is a good start. Again, battery backup clock not found and no extra RAM. So that board is completely dead at the moment. So yeah, we'll have to investigate that one further. So this one's going to need more in-depth repair, which I'll probably do in another video rather than in this one. So I'll put that to one side. Two more boards left to test. Now these ones have a switch on, so I'll have to make sure that I get the uh, switch in the right position. Line up. Okay, so that says on and off, so it's in the on position. Oh, we get software failure. So immediately that one doesn't work. Let's try turning the switch off. Yeah, and that's reading, so let's try turning it back on again. And it appears to be starting this time. Maybe it was just a glitch in the matrix. Again, no clock found and no extra memory as well. So that one is completely non-functional. Okay. So last but not least, this is the same type of board, just an ultimately older revision. And we'll see how this one goes. Again, battery backup clock not found, and again, no extra memory. So we've got three boards with no clock and no RAM. We have one board, this one, that has, has uh, RAM but no clock, and then we have the board where um, it's fully functional. So one fully working, one partially working, and three completely dead. Actually, I think this is the one that's no, this one's the one that wasn't working. So I'll have to do any more in-depth troubleshooting on these ones and uh, see if we can get them uh, working again and bring them back to life. So if you like this video, then please give me a thumbs up and also uh, hit that subscribe button and if you would like to get notified of future uh, releases then please ring that bell icon goodbye for now